welcome back to Lessons Learned. I'm Sherry. This is Monday Quilt Chat, where we chat about everything quilty in my world and in the quilting world in general. Just whatever comes to mind to get us motivated to keep our craft going. Uh, this wonderful quilting craft that we're doing. Uh, we love fabric. We love thread. We love our sewing machines. And all that put together eventually makes a quilt. <laughs> so, what's been going on? Hazel's hat. I mentioned Hazel's hat on Friday. That was the Lori Holt Fusion Pattern Fusion Project. Uh, Millie's dresses and haberdashery. You saw that on Friday. If you haven't seen that, go back and, and look at it. It's hanging on my design board still, so I didn't get it down. But I will tell you that I do have all of the rows finished, connected, all of the blocks connected, and all of the rows connected. And I also have a narrow border of background fabric around it. I used nearly every piece of my background. I have some scraps that would fit right here. That's it. I mean, my, my narrow border is cut at one and a half. It will finish at one. I couldn't make it any bigger. I would have loved for it to have been two inches just for roominess sake, but actually I'm looking at it. The design itself doesn't really call for a wider background border. So I think the one inch finished is going to be going to be okay. Now I still had to work on my quilt math for the pieced border that's yet to go around it. So I'll be working on that soon. And several of you expressed in interest in getting those measurements. I will compile those once I have that you know, once I know it's going to work, uh, I mean, so far so good. All I have to do is that at last border. I'll have to resize it uh, to fit because I'm, you know, that's made to fit Millie's dresses. And that's a much smaller quilt than this one has turned out to be. So uh, I will get that all together in, in some sort of a document for you to have. Uh, and I'll put it somewhere where you can get it. So no charge. So that felt good to get that all put together up to this point now. Um, yeah, it was, it was a little bit of a, little bit of a, a stressful thing trying to uh, do all those measurements, just making it up out of my head uh, and then adding some interest to the two patterns so that it looks like one cohesive quilt. So I think I accomplished that. I think it looks pretty good. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm getting close to the finish line on that. So uh, this weekend I had my foundation paper piecing class at my local quilt store. And it was, it was great fun. And I uh, got to meet Sarah Thomas, a Moda fabric designer and also a pattern designer. Um, she goes by the trademark of Sari Diddy, which is two of her um, nicknames that she's had in her life. Sari from Sarah, of course, which uh, was more in her childhood years. And then Diddy was from her last name, maiden name, which was Dittman. They called her Diddy in college. So she combined the two to make her her company name, Sari Diddy. So she was with us and uh, very um, detailed and very um, math minded. Uh, she was explaining that to us, how she's always been the type to, to enjoy calculations and, you know, changing things from one set of calculations to another type to be able to do things which comes in real handy with foundation paper piecing and writing those patterns so she's very big into foundation paper piecing she would rather do that than any other type of quilting uh, as a matter of fact the, the project that we did had some flying geese in it but we foundation paper pieced them so um, talking about accurate 
flying geese, that's, that's the way to get it. Here is the um, pattern that we, we did. We did a block of this, which it was a, one of these squares. This pattern is on point. Um, as of right now, I don't think I'm going to make an entire quilt out of this pattern, but we did make a block and I almost got it done during class. Let me show you my block. This is made with her fabric line, Land of Enchantment. And I will put a, um, a picture of that fabric line up right here so you can see it. So it's, it's very, she works in very bright, bold colors. Uh, not really rainbowish per se, but bright. So, although she does have a paper piece rainbow quilt, it's really cute. <laughs> but uh, I'll try to, I don't know when I can get to this, but I would like to show you some of the pictures I took. I might put those on Facebook, the pictures that I took of her quilts that she brought with her. But um, yeah, this is, this is what we did. And, you know, we paper pieced all of this, except for the center. And this is from uh, another piece in her line that's Telavera, like the Tele, tel, Telavera tiles. She has this in, uh, this is a dark blue background. She has it in a white background. And there's another one. I can't remember. Is it yellow? I'm not sure. Or it looks different. Maybe it's a different pattern. I'm not sure. But I got some while I was there. And I thought, well, maybe I should go ahead and get something to finish this if I make it into a wall hanging or a pillow. So I got this print. Which is, those are not wolves. They're not foxes. They are coyotes. Are you looking at them upside down? There. How about that? Well, they're every other. Every other one is upside down. But you get the picture. Those are coyotes. This comes in several colors. And then this uh, fabric right here is feathers. So this is called Land of Enchantment. And it was based on her time that she spent in um, uh, New Mexico. Which is, that's their state motto. Or, yeah, state motto, I guess. Uh, Land of Enchantment. So, very pretty line. Very pretty. And she does gorgeous work. One thing I learned on uh, foundation paper piecing is take your foundation, one of, make an extra page, cut out these as if they were templates right on the sewing line. Cut out one of them, and then when you go to your fabric, just lay those on your fabric and then cut a half an inch bigger all the way around. Why didn't I think of that? Why did I not think of that? That's so, so common sense. So it's nothing to print up another page and, and do that with it. Um, saves a lot of time and a lot of anxiousness about making sure you got the piece, the piece big enough that you're going to sew in. Also, she said, don't go buy um, specialty uh, foundation paper. Rather, go to a website that she recommended and get newsprint. You can get a roll of newsprint. And I think it's called... I'll put it in the description box. I don't remember exactly, and I don't want to say it wrong. I'll put that in the description box. Uh, there's a website you can go and buy a roll of newsprint. Perfect. So those are two, two very valuable things I learned in that class. You think, well, why in the world would you go do a class where you already know how to foundation paper piece? Well, you're always learning. You're always learning from other people in the class, from other instructors. Maybe one instructor will teach something a different way. So, if you have a local quilt shop, take their classes, and that's a wonderful way to, to support them as well, because you know you're going to buy something when you're in there, besides having paid for the class. So, I think it's, I think it's a wonderful way to support them. 
she's going to have a new book out in this summer and uh, she had one with her and I got to look through it slowly and it's a very very well written book with very clear illustrations and instructions and patterns and uh, it's it's just probably the, the best foundation paper piecing book I've ever seen so when those come out I'll be sure and get one so I can show you and uh, help you to be able to get one of your own. I'm looking at my list of things to talk about. Blue's Batik Project. You know, little cockapoo blue. He has a charity project going on. Well, he and I do. For the Humane Society. So, if you didn't see Wednesday's video, please go back and watch that so you can see what that's all about. Here is the block. Batik, you just need two contrasting batiks, and I just need one of these blocks from you. And you can fold this up, it'll fit in a envelope with one stamp. And the, all that information is with this video. I think my P.O. box is in the description of this video as well as normal. So we're going to um, make a quilt. I'm going to make a quilt with your blocks and then once I get that quilt done I'm going to auction it. Anyone can bid on it. They don't even have to be a subscriber or anything. I haven't figured out yet still which platform I will use for an auction whether it be eBay or something else. But we're going to spread the word and get people to bid on this quilt. The proceeds from that quilt from the winners you know once they pay for it and I have cash in hand that money is going to go to the Humane Society and um, we will honor one of you who sent in a block as the donor so this will be an ongoing thing there will be many more quilts we can make uh, many more chances to get um, I'll probably most definitely put all of your names on the back of the quilt um, that won't be in the hands of the Humane Society but it will be in the hands of whoever essentially made the donation so uh, that'll be nice if you don't mind me doing that but uh, any details you need about that go back to Wednesday's video and you'll see those as well as the the measurements for this in the description box okay I got the sew sampler box in this week and I'm not going to do an unboxing of that but I do want to talk about pressed flowers which this is their quilt along in the box and it's getting ready to end this is the last one it's called love in a mist and love I never heard of the flower love in a mist but it says it symbolizes bonds that bind people together. How nice. We have bonds that bond us together, don't we? Our quilting, quilting habit that we have. <laughs> habit. I don't know if that's the right word or not. Hobby. This is the layout. Check it out. It is on point. I'm so glad they're going to put them on point. So what I have to do, you can see where, where these white boxes are. It's got the block numbers on it. I might switch, switch them up depending on how mine look because I didn't use this fabric line. I used something else. Well, I used scraps basically, or fabrics from my stash. So mine's all different colors. So what I need to figure out is what do I want to put here? What color? You can throw me an idea out there. You've seen my blocks. They're all different colors. Pink, orange, blue, red. And then I have a green, a really small dot, green leaves, and a white on white background. So these are just like four little corners that come together to make that little diamond. So yeah, that's that. that'll be coming up soon. I'm, I'm anxious to not only get this block done for this month while I've got the time and start doing this. So 
more projects coming up. Speaking of more projects coming up, um, getting ready to start the Tilda project. Remember the Tilda project? It's with Tilda's line called Hibernation. And uh, if you go to tildasworld.com under free patterns and then Hibernation, the collection, Hibernation, it's berry wreath. I'll put a picture right here. I've showed it to you before, but some of you are newer and may not know what in the world I'm talking about. So this project is going to start soon, especially now that the Hazel's hat is nearing being finalized. And um, yeah, there's there's the Tilda Berry Weath project is going to start soon but it is going to be it's not going to be a tutorial I would love to have you know whoever wants to that has that line if you want to do it with me or if you want to do it with another line it's not applique it's um, just regular piecing if you know how to do a quarter inch seam you can do this this pattern it looks complicated but it's really not there's a lot of little pieces but it's not hard so feel free I'm not doing tutorials on the block because it's not my pattern but um, yeah I would love to have you along with me on that if you are interested um, what else do I have for you I feel like I'm forgetting something I think we need to go to the art quilt of the week and I will put a picture of that right here and it's called Links of Enchantment. Ah, we had Land of Enchantment. Now we have Links of Enchantment. This quilt is 65 by 70. It's by Marianne Clark of Rapid City, South Dakota. Marianne used a pattern by Running With Scissors, companion to Studio 180 Rulers. The most fun parts for Marianne were the color design, planning the quilting design, and using her HQ Sweet 16 machine and curved rulers. The quilted piano keys border added a new element to the background, displayed at the Black Hills Guild Quilt Show in Rapid City, South Dakota. Yes, the pattern is Love Links by Running With Scissors Quilting, but she names her quilt Links of Enchantment. And wow, she did great on her, uh, her, um, long arming that she did she used rulers and that yes i agree that piano keyboarder does give a really cool effect to the background it's kind of like a floating border in a way lots of detailed quilting on there lovely and i love the colors the bright colors she chose for it and how she positioned those is perfect so there's some inspiration for you I did do some uh, journaling last week every day I did do some stuff these two days are kind of sparse but I did work on the Millie's dresses borders on Friday and I went to my class on Saturday which was an all-day class <laughs> and I still didn't get my my block completely done I finished it uh, Sunday morning that's when I finished it so here we are another week we have things to do we have works in progress we have um ufos we have quilt kits we have panels we have stuff to make bags there's, there's just all kinds of stuff we can get our hands on and into this week so please um yeah Please do something because you'll be glad. You'll be glad you did. We need to keep keep our talents and keep our uh, efficiency and all those tricks and tips that we've learned along the way. We want to keep those fresh so that we can do a good job on our projects. I didn't get to the long arm this week, which was sad. I was going to do that on Wednesday 
and I had an unexpected errand that took some time and I just could not get started. So there's kind of two phases to long arming. There's, there's loading the quilt and then there's quilting the quilt. So <laughs> I, I didn't have enough time to load the quilt between when I got up and when it was sprung on me to go do this errand. So that messed up the whole, the whole thing. So I'm going to have to, have to, have to stick something in there this week. I don't want to get rusty on my long arming because I still have plenty of that to do as well. So I hope this video provided you with plenty of inspiration, motivation, whatever it is you need to get going on your projects. Um, so please do so. Please get those things out and, and do a little bit each day if you can. And you'll be glad. You'll be really glad. I'll be back here on Wednesday with a mystery video. I don't know what it's going to be. I've got a couple of things I need to pick from and get that out to you on Wednesday. So I'll be back on here on Lessons Learned uh, Wednesday and then back again on Friday for Finish It Friday. Send in your finishes if you have any. Uh, pay attention to the guidelines in the description box for submitting photos, but we would love to see your work. All right, have a great week and I will see you back here on Wednesday. Bye.